And for more on this conversation, we are now joined by Dr. Ingrid Walters. She is a member of the Ophthalmological Society of South Africa. And she joins us now via our video link. Dr. Ingrid, thank you so much for your time this evening here in SABC News. Let's start off here. What is a, a myopia? Um, so, I like you short sightedness, uh, and it's when our actual eyeballs are a little bit large. Um, and the light can't focus on the retina clearly. And it focuses um, in front of the retina and you require corrective lenses or um, spectacles to be able to see clearly. It's also linked and um, associated with numerous um, ocular conditions such as glaucoma and cataract, retinal detachments. Uh, so the increase in recent years is, is very, very concerning. Mm. And Dr. Ingrid, I mean, just looking at the statistics, it says by 2050, it would have affected half of the world's population. One would say that is very concerning. Yeah, it's very, very concerning. And it also is um, predominantly affecting young adults and um, more concerning school age children. Um, yeah, and it's they're very, very high risk of the myopia increasing with time. Um, as they age and as they get older, and like I said, it's associated with um, very, very nasty comorbidities, which potentially can be blinding. Mm. And what is aiding uh, a myopia, and why do we continue to see a large increase? Um, so yeah, so it's sort of, um, it's, you could, you, it's multifactorial, um, the development of myopia. There are very strong genetic risk factors, which obviously someone can't, you can't do anything about that, which is it's how you were born. But um, the main one and the ones that we can change are things like screen time um, and time outdoors, mm. natural, natural light. And when you say screen time, I immediately think of children. Uh, would you say that too much screen time, uh, specifically for toddlers, is actually hampering their ability to see in the future? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's unfortunately not something we can escape um, because screens are just part of our everyday lives. Um, but at least doing sort of healthy screen time habits and at least limiting the amount of screen time um, for our children is, is yeah, definitely going to, to serve their eyes well in the future. Mm, and a number of parents, I'm sure, are asking themselves, how do you begin by even limiting a, a screen time and how much or too much uh, is a screen time for your children? Uh, or what can you do uh, to sort of try and avert uh, this problem that never really existed uh, in large numbers like we are seeing now? Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a really difficult it's a really difficult one, um, and yeah. So the American Academy of Pediatrics has got very good sort of guidelines on screen time, um, exactly how many hours a day based on the age of the child um, you should be letting them watch screens. Um, and obviously, there are screens that are worse. So the screens that are close to the face, such as your phone screens and iPads, are worse than screens in the distance. So those are little things you can look at, and then also. Um, we need to work on the protective, the protective things, such as um, exposure to natural light. So, I mean, if a child is having to look at screens, you should also try and get them to spend at least one hour a day outdoors in the natural light, because that can prevent myopia. And then we also have, um, we have lenses and spectacles and medications now, which can also help with the progression of myopia, and that should also be looked at. If a child is diagnosed with myopia or short-sightedness, um, they should seek an yeah, they should see an eye care practitioner so that these options can be discussed with them. Mm. And how do you know if your child uh, may be suffering from myopia? Um, absolutely. So there's some common um, things that you can look at. So obviously, if a child's old enough, they're going to say, I can't see the board or I can't see the TV while in the distance. So that's obviously the easiest thing. Um, younger children might squint their eyes or just naturally move really close to objects to be able to see them clearly, such as sitting like really close to a book or really close to the, the phone screen. Um, those are good indications, but also, like I said, squinting of the eyes, rubbing the eyes. Um, and then in, in school age, if the teachers would notify the parents if they're not performing well at school, um, if their scholastic performance is, is going down, they're not interested in sports and things like that. Behavioral issues can also actually be myopia related. Mm. Earlier on, uh, Dr. Ingrid, you touched on the issues around genetics. 
what uh, what role does uh, ge uh, genetics play uh, um, in trying to discover if your child or if maybe somebody is suffering from myopia? Um, so it's a multifactorial um, <clears throat> inheritance. So it's not just one gene that you can say test for, but if you're if one or both of your parents wear glasses or contact lenses or have had myop myopic corrective procedures like surgically, then they should take those your, your their children for testing. Um, yeah, the higher if one parent is affected, your chance is high if both then absolutely affected and they should just take their child either to an optometrist or an ophthalmologist and then myopia can be ruled out. All right, uh, Dr. Ingrid, thank you so much for your time. Uh, that's uh, Dr. Ingrid Walters there just giving us an insight in terms of uh, the issues surrounding uh, myopia and what you can do as a parent. Of course, also they're cautioning parents uh, to avoid too much screen time for children, urging them to take their children in the outdoors.